to Nisi Television, the house of rest. Hello and welcome to the Culture Press, the only place where you can get fun and informative information about the African culture with me, your host, Kamodo Rehab. Join me every Sunday at 2 p.m. only at Nisi TV to get all the tea. Everything about our culture, our history, our languages, our food, and, and so much more. I cannot wait. <laughs> Yeah, good day, each and everyone, wherever you are watching us. Uh, my name is Mohamed Ali from Freetown, Sierra Leone. Uh, the CEO and the founder of We for Africa, Africa, the destiny of all black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, hi, guys. Um, I am so excited to be joined by uh, Mohamed from We for Africa today. Uh, it's been a tough time trying to get him, as he's a very, very busy man, as you might imagine. So today we are here to talk about relearning our history and how we will relearn our history. As we all know, it is very, very important to actually relearn our history because from relearning our history is where we know how to go forward as a nation and as a people. So let's just start with the first question, the first burning question. Mohammed, if you could help us, why is it very important for us to relearn our history? Okay, firstly, we start what is history. History is a story of past event, very important past event. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Africa mm -hmm. as a whole continent, as a, as a black people, um, we've been uh, having a rich history. But our history was taken, mm -hmm. on, uh, by, was taken from us, by different people. So much, much of our scholars have been written, that have been uh, stolen by us, by so-called people who came to Africa the late, the late centuries, right? Um, mm -hmm. Firstly, before we start, um, uh, very important, what, what is, are the importance of history? History creates awareness because, you know, when wherever you are, when you know your history, you know who, who, you, who you are, right? So it creates awareness. It is very important for people to learn their history because when you learn your history, you know your, 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 your status, you know your status, you know we are, you know what what has passed you can, what what has passed you can able to judge in the present but if you don't know your history you cannot able to judge the, the particular um where you are right now because you know uh many things have been missing on our history uh, we are not taught our really our history we are not taught our history that's gone missing for a very long time very long time we've been just learning some people's histories and our schools and our classes so uh, this uh have got us uh way back backwardness so this is the time we learn our history. It creates self-awareness, self-thought, right? So uh, one of the key factors that are um, important to learn your history is um, self-confidence. When you know your history, you know what has passed, right? You know that, that the race, the particular black race, are not just men there as a slaves, right? We have a rich history before slavery. Mm -hmm. we, have, yes, we have rich history before slavery. We have been kings before slavery. We built empires before slavery. We build um, estates, we are kings, we migrate before history, right? We won wars before history, before, before uh, way back. So this is the time around we have to come together, you know, like, you know, to rewrite our history ourselves because, you know, our history was written by somebody who did not want our history to, to be portrayed. So this time around, we have to come together, um, you know, to learn our history. This is what we have self-confidence. A history, one of the main facts in the history of uh, history is history connects us to our ancestors, right? History connects mm -hmm. all of the parts of history. It connects you to your ancestors. Because you cannot, you cannot, you, you, are, you are black, you can see yourself as black, but history tells you what your, your ancestors have been doing. 
then what uh what what it means for you to continue on, on that particular history well, it was because you have to leave that forever you know what is what, what what your ancestor has been doing what they've gone through are you understanding so it means the connection yeah. you and this is one of the key factors, what the most important of history, to learn history. It connects you from you and your ancestors, right? So another, it gives uh, motivation and determination. One of the key uh, um, enlightenment of history, it, motiv it motivates you, it determination. Like, I, I was not here when Pro Professor Lumba, Professor Lumba was, was a, was a uh, prime minister, of Ibiasi Congo, who fought for, 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 for his people. But I'm here today inspired by him because I read history. I'm inspired by him. I want to be like him. And many of our Africa used to be inspired by Professor Lumumba. That's this all because of history. So what if this, this thing was not taught, uh, taught or somebody not taught us uh, about this history of Professor Lumumba? How would we know? How would we be inspired by Professor Lumumba? So this is one of the key things that we, have, we need to learn, right? So you see, so these are some of the, the, the most important because there's a lot of questions. So if we can say we can attack on I have more, I have more right now. It teaches love, history teaches love, it teaches passion. History makes you to feel confidence of yourself. Like, you know, um, we have past history, we have, we have past kings. So I can determine, I can determine for, for me to take a step forward, how to rewrite my own history too, for, for, for me to be a king because we have some some um, about uh, in in our villages here. Most of our ancestors are kings. We are born in, in a particular ruling house. When you came, you you just see that like you know my ancestor was a king, so I also can be a king. So by this, I can stand for myself. Mm -hmm. So they can uh, fight for the power that was gained by the ancestors. They become a king too. So history is very important to the uh, to our culture. That's why I'm working very hard to you know like. I have school on my own, on Beef Africa School, where I can teach purely history, not, not everything about Western artists, no, pure African history. I change the whole of the curriculum to make African history for, for the children to, to be self-confident, to be self-actualization, and to determine for, for their people and the black race. Yeah, thank you. That's very, very good. Um, it's always such a lovely time learning from you, Mohammed. To just to add on from what he said, um, it's not even to add on, I think it's just to emphasize on what he said about we were just not meant to be slaves or to be below the westernized world. Because in this very day, our ancestors really fought to give us freedom. And the path they left is the mental freedom. We don't have the mental freedom. We still think the Western, the Western countries are better than us, their ways are better than us. Everything they do is better than us. And it is very important for us to learn our history so that we know how much heritage we have, how much potential we have, how much culture we have. And we can go very, very far by following um, our culture. For example, um, a few days ago, I was attending a conference here in Kenya by um, a community called uh, Amali community. And they had this very good uh, speaker in the panel, his name was Nanjero, if I, or Nanjero, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. And he was telling us the importance of our African identity, but how he was saying it is our Kenyan identity. And he was telling us that you cannot go very far or you can't be all these things that you want to be if you want to be them trying to be like Western people, trying to be like people from other places, we can be who we want to be, we can reach our greatest potential only when we decide to do it as Africans, as Kenyans, and as people from Sierra Leone, for example. So that is very, very insightful. So which brings me to my next question. Like, we have so many, so many societal issues, um, one of them being, I don't even think it's a societal issue, but one of them being poverty, discrimination against people of different um, levels of life. How does relearning our history help us um, understand our societal issues? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, relearning our, our, our history, how, come again the question, relearning our history? All right, all right. How can relearning our history help us understand societal issues? Come again, please. 
Say it loud. All right, all right. And say, how, um, can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah, I can hear you. All right, so it is, how can relearning our history help us understand societal issues? And by societal issues, I mean issues such as poverty and discrimination, corruption, things like that. Okay, no problem. Like I was saying, um, relearning our history, it helps us, it embarks us on our leadership position, right? Our leadership, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Everything about history, everything about history is motivation. It motivates you, it determines you, right? So by relearning your history, by relearning history, it like, it connects you for, from one place, from other country to another, right? You can, able, when you relearn your history, you can able to, to create impact in your societies. Like you say, measuring poverty, you remember measuring, uh, you know, like these uh, diseases. Like for example, like for, the, like for Sierra Leone here, we was having an Ebola, right? This all our history that I uh, have already um, set back on our, on our, our, our put already, put on our, um, you know, um, issues on our history, right? Because this is a part of Australian history now, right? So we have to relearn our history. There are many, there are many, um, um, like platform, like for right now, um, as we are doing on Beef Africa, right? Beef Africa is, you know, every day we dig about four histories, we post it there for people to see because people are lazy right now for you to take a book and sit in reading, you know, you always be falling in love with your phone. So we thought it of it that like, you know, um, all this is that, is that is in the book, so why can't we put it in the media? So people, you know, people can engage it and read it, right? So we have to relearn our history. By relearning our history, it doesn't mean that we have to just relearn it in school or in universities, in everywhere. Even like me talking to you, somebody watching this our video, you can learn something, right? Always start determining yourself that I'm a black people. I have to determine where the black people should be. That's the question here for the black people. Mm -hmm. So in school, in school, even though we are not taught, but this, I'm very happy that um, we are coming on board. I'm having different motivation, different places, so we can come together and do, do away things that we can relearn our history every time, any hour, any place, wherever you are. Because many people are lazy. As people are, are already discriminating black people say, whenever you want to hide something, just put it in the book. No, the, the Negro cannot read. Say the black people, if you want to hide something from them, put it in a book. And we see an example, like when, 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 this, uh, when this riot happened in South Africa, you know, to deport these all black people, you know, they, well, they marched out the street, they broke shop, they broke everything. But there was one a library in the center of the market that never broke one. No one took even a book, even a script. It was so that no one interested in book in Africa. So this time around, by learning our history, you know, we have to inspire them. We have to, you know, attack in every, every, in every aspect, in schools, you know, in public places. Because sometimes even they attack me in public places. Because I tell the African history, wherever I sit, you know, some people out there, you know, Africa is not growing. Africa will not grow. Like, they've been using us since uh, so many years. Now they are, they are using us too. Then, I, then I will, by the time I will come forward, then I, when, when, when I start narrating that, you know, people will, will agree with me because I know the, the, the fact, the actual place where I have to attack. Because, like, for example, um, Idi Amin Dada. You know, Idi Amin Dada, people have already misrepresented him saying that Idi Amin is bad, so bad, you know. He already, you know, is a killer, is a murderer. He already watching in the TV. So I told him, like, what you want in the TV is something that is just acted by some people who sat together and put cameras and acted, you know, for you to watch you to think that Idi Amin was bad. But Idi Amin's everything today as Uga for Uganda. Because Uganda was overpopulated by white people. He drove everyone. So the Uganda is because of, in the hands of the Ugandans, because of Idi Amin Dada. So this, that's a rich history. This is how we relearn our history. You know, everywhere in the social media, in the schools, in the you know, in the platform, you know, interactions. You know, this is where how we can relearn our history. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's very very insightful. So I hope you are all learning everything. Every time you get Mohammed to have a conversation for, with you about Africa, you learn something new every every time. And I think we should normalize having him on this show because he offers so much education to us so mohammed um this brings me to my next question what are some of the consequences of not understanding our history and or misunderstanding misconceptions 
you see, like we even have very crazy misconceptions where you hear people say that colonization did us good, you know? Yeah. So what are some of the consequences of not knowing or misinterpreting our history? Okay, first the one of the one one of the, the, the uh, consequences not know, by not knowing your history, you are always your 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 self actualization will always be missing. Your self actualization will always be missing because you know um, when you know your past history, what your ancestors have been doing, by then you will determine say that I have to create something for my country for my people. Are you understanding? So many people have misunderstood that. Like for example, I can give an example like. You know, um, mis misjudgment like for the people who died in, in the Mediterranean Sea to oversee. You know, um, people have been going there thinking like, you know, there is everything out there because, you know, they were teaching in school there is a, there is a milk and honey in the oversea. So people went to Libya, died at the sea, so many people because, you know, they take it to be like, you know, we are born slaves, then we cannot, we cannot be able to progress ourselves, we cannot be able to do anything. So the white people are, are they having everything. So when you go there, you will you you will, you will achieve what your your desires. So this is a very one of the very misconduction misconception of our, of our of our history. You know, history tells us determination. When you know your history, like like for me right now, I already I already know the, the true basement of Africa. Then I believe that I can do something for Africa, right? By my own determination. Then so many people that I'm you know that I I start from some some I will start from me, right? So this will help um, our, 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 our society. This will help our society. But without knowing your history, you won't do anything. You won't go anywhere because you know you always thought that mm -hmm. you you yes, because like for example, like let me let me let me take this um, this very example, right? Like for invention here in Africa, like this phone, the smartphone was, was invent, invented uh, by, by the black people. Smartphone, the the, the, the you know like the street sweeper. The, the and um this um the the uh this CCTV cameras right was invented by black people now we are in Africa why are we why are we are not invent inventors as what our what what comes to mind right because you always think that for you to be an inventor you have to go to the overseas there are sophisticated uh, uh, sophisticated uh, tools that you use to, to to be an inventor or to be an educator to be an uh, uh, to be a poet right but forget to do know that you are here, you can achieve that here. Right? So this is a time for us to, to mm -hmm. do this mission and teach our kids that they can do it here. They can everything is possible here. This misconception of history that um white do it better, black black didn't do it better. We have to change that narrative. This misconception has to be ended, right? We have to like for our people, because you know, uh, many youth out there in the street, you know, like um not so passionate about Africa. When you tell them about Africa, they will just think that uh, it is bullshit. They're, you know, like, you know, Africa is not capable of doing anything. It's what you have already indoctrinated by them, indoctrinated by them. Then we have so, so, some of our, of our diaspora who are supposed to, uh, you know, they already did their environmental analysis. They know the weakness and strength of Africa. They went to the overseas. For them to come back and invest in, in, in you know, in, in idealize our people, you know, like, um, in terms of technology, helping our people in terms of technology, recreational centers, but they are investing in, in, in politics. They become a leaders also. They reap our resources and go to overseas. So this is very mis very misconception. So this time around, you know, we have to relearn our history for us not to be mis mis misconcept about our, our history. Misconception is very bad and it is very terrible for our young generation. Rich history can inspire our people. Misconception of our history make us sit where we are. We cannot move forward because, you know, they write our history. They, they choose to show us what, what they want for us to see in the media, right? For, for them to misconcept us, right? To know, not, to, not to have self-believing. Because when you know history, you'll be self-confident. Well, without knowing your history, you'll just be like, you know, you're just living for, for, for a time, like, you know, without love. But when you know history, you love, you have passion, you know, you, you grow your idea, you know, to, to recreate something, um, you know, like um, to have that line with um, other people who have been doing for their, for, for, for their countries, right? Um, through history, through history, right? And like, for example, like um, for the people in, in, in some countries in, in Europe, when you say go to other countries, go and stay there, you say, what do you want to do what? You won't go. But for your Africa, just issue somebody a, a visa. 
You will go everywhere you want to go. In fact, you will not ever return here in Africa because of a misconception. Misconception is very bad. That's what they teach us. Because I, even me, when I was when I was somehow young, like uh, when I was um, about six, seven years back, I would, just say, I would think like, you know, when you want to achieve, you just have to go to university before you achieve. I was very inspired by overseas. Inspired, inspired. By the time I started learning, I was started learning, started watching videos. Malema, Nana Kofado, Mwali Munyere. So I become inspired. I become inspired. I was, I started moving. I was started moving. I started writing, doing write ups. So this is how I self taught myself. Self taught. No one tell me tell me to be Pan Africanist or to, to create a page. No, I just decided that I know something has to be done here in Africa. So I broke that chain for the misconception. This is where I am today. We are trying, uh, all my coordinators, we are trying to inspire more for them to not to miss concepts uh, of, of Africa. Let them see through what is Africa. We let them see what Africa is capable of doing. And the, the time for Africa is now. The 21st century is Africa century. Thank you. Okay, that's very, very good. So our next question. So um, before I tackle the next question, we are learning that um, misconceptions keep us in the same cycles. Refusing to, re to really learn our history or even to know our history correctly is keeping us in a cycle that has proven many times that it's not working. So for us to move forward as a people, we genuinely have to relearn our history and embrace who we are as a people. So this brings me to the next question. Now we are talking about how the education systems and the media um, are just showing us what they want us to see and we are not exactly being taught the real history. How can, um, the educa how can our education system teach us an accurate and diverse history? What can they make do to make sure they're teaching us an accurate and diverse history? Uh, thank you very much. Before I start, I start, I'll have to start with Ghana, right? Um, for Ghana right now, mm -hmm. things. first, you, you know, when, it, when you have to do something, you have to idealize, you have to start from the basement, right? Ghana, for now, the uniforms are African, it's purely African uniforms. It's the first starting. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. Uniforms in Ghana, some of the, most of the schools in Ghana, the uniforms are purely African uniforms. Are you understanding? So, we have, we have, by learning, we have so many points, like uh, Maria Mabai in Senegal. We have uh, uh, this uh, Chinua Achebe in Nigeria and the others that have already issued books that, we, in, that write Africa, right? So we learn in our history is very important, right? So these things have to be taught in schools since young, early age, young kids. You know, um, let me say, um, for us in the universities, we, we can do research, but for the kids, for them to for them to know the actual um, and facts, what uh, has to be done here about our history, this should be started from the kids out there. Ghana is doing absolutely well. The diaspora of Ghana is doing absolutely well. The Nigerians in the diaspora is doing absolutely well. For Nigerians, they are artists, they are, perform, uh, they are, they are people. When he says, most of the Nigerians, when he says go to the overseas, like, they will say, no, I love it here in Nigeria. And Nigerians, Nigerians, whatever they take in, in overseas, they, count, they bring it in here. They can take it in Nigeria and go to the overseas, they bring it here. Why I'm saying this? Because, you know, everything starts at home, right? So, relearning our history started, it needs to start at the schools. We have to teach our kids. There's a lot of African history books that is not in, in, our, in, our, in our libraries. When you go to every library, most of the libraries in our, in our, in our, in our like for Sierra Leone, I know here, right? For Sierra Leone, whenever you go to the library, you never see an African book. We have to distribute these books to the libraries. Not only just schools. We have, some people have already marched out from schools. Some are some are, are drop out from schools. How they can they access this 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 of our history, right? So we have to distribute our books, our history book, to the libraries. We have to teach our our children, our our our, our teachers, our lecturers has to be there. Should be a particular individuals who teach really African history. We have our school is here who teach not only African history. You have to teach our history. Like for example, um, I have watched so many videos in the overseas. When they interview a particular individual, a particular young boy or young girl, name me three countries in Africa. They will say no. I, I don't know. I don't know the three. I don't know three countries in Africa. They never taught us in school. But here in our schools, they teach our. They teach us 
European countries, American countries. No one in our schools in a high level that don't know about America, Europe, France, Germany. Because we've been, we've been taking this, teaching these children what we're supposed to teach them. We are not teaching them what we're not supposed to teach them. We teach them. The world you said not care about our history. Europeans do not care about our history. Indians do not care about our history. Russians do not care about our history. China do not care about our history. Why are we caring about their histories? Why can't we teach in schools our own very history? Mm -hmm. Because it's there we're supposed to be started. In schools, in the, in the, in, so since the nursery, since the primary schools, since the junior secondary schools, SS, then it has to be compulsory in our, in our, in our examinations. For us to develop as a people, we have to know history is a very important aspect. It has a very important role to play in our, in, our, in our development, in our society, in our environment. So that's why teaching history in our schools, in our public places, it is very important, it is very vital. And the time is now, as I was saying, this is my whole of a project right now. I want to, I want to have my, I want to channel my own very school. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as we so are we saying, are to... continue. Yes, I said uh, as we are, we are saying, uh, relearning our history in schools. Uh, we already talked about many many um, aspect of it. Then sure, uh, our schools need uh, our history need to be taught in our schools by our own very people. Not no one. You no know, one will have to do it for us. No one will teach our history. You know the, the our oppressor. When they write your history, you know, they, they put their what they think it will, uh, you know, will work for them. So for our history to be to be well narrated, to be well taught, to be well um, well documented, we have we just have to do it ourselves. We can believe in ourselves. We have so many authors, so many poets. We have so many people with very distinctive um, ideas, knowledges, you know, capabilities. And we are capable. We are capable. We are one of the world most uh, most intelligent people in the world. No one can de deny that fact from us. So this is the time we have to take uh, our self uh, re uh, responsibility and do things for ourselves. Rewriting our history, teaching our history, you know, learning our history, you know, advocating for our, uh, to history to our, our our future generation, our our present generation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for us to be hard, for us to be like, for us to. Um, Put in the context we are, everyone can see it. In a school, like uh, we see these our books. In, you know, um, sometimes when you, when you want to narrate a history, you don't just have to put it in writing. There is a pictures. There are so many pictures. There are so many videos that you can watch. You know that you can you know learn from, like the King, uh, the Shaka Zulu of uh, of Shaka Zulu of South Africa. We have these um, warriors, uh, this lady in out there in, in Benin Republic who built an empire, who defeated the, the emperors, who helped, um, you know, this, this by, by you learning, by this girls learning about this lady, you know, it inspired them, you know, that a warrior is not just a meal. A woman can be a warrior. A woman can take a whole generation to its destiny, not just a meal, right? So, you know, uh, many, many, uh, many historians, many warriors, this, many um, battles that are fought by this woman. So we have to teach our women, like um, the Woman King, uh, it's a very important movie, a very religious movie, a very educative movie. You know, we have to put these movies in, in, in our curriculum sometimes. We have to teach our kids to them to watch our own movie that we acted, you know, to, to you know, to, to re-narrate it. Because like, um, something I am watching uh, Black Panther. You know, here in Africa, we will learn that when there is a burial, you have to be a black. So this means you being a black is something bad. When we are in a white in a, in a wedding, this means it's a joy. White means tells you of joy. But according to Black Panther, during the burial, they we are the white for a burial ceremony. You know, you know, like when we do something ourselves, we, like we portray what we, you know, what is supposed to be portrayed. Right, but then we are black. When, when, by the time in 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 in, in, in whole of a king, like when they want to nominate, give them the kingship, they we are black. In their throne, in the in the kingdom, they we are black. In the burial, they we are white. So you see these narrations. And when you watch the, the woman king again, this movie very important and very uh, uh very decent movie, very educative. And um, most of the movies are, are you know it's partake with women. 
So this is how they, they educate our history through a movie. It cannot just be done through, as I was saying, through the book, through the blackboard, through the, the pen and paper. No, it has something physical. We are in the world where everything has been digitalized. So let's digitalize ourselves to match um, the, the issues that are happening right now. So thank you. Okay, that's very, very good. So um, now we have learned the importance of why we should learn our history. And now which brings us to our next thing. Now we've decided we are learning our history. How? What are the resources available to teach us to learn our history? Where do we start? For example, for you that is self-taught, how did you start and how should we start? Come again, please. All right, I'm saying, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So I'm saying that um, for you who was able to relearn your history, um, how can we relearn our history? What are the resources available that favor us relearning our history? What are the things that favor us to learn our history? Like what are the resources that we can use to learn our history? What are the resources? Some of the resources like the media, the media, well, media platform, you said it's just something like, well, it's not a resource, it's not something like you can see fishing about it's something that's within because your phone is, is yours. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. So you can use media, you can use, um, as I was saying, flyers, you can use, uh, because even this of my t-shirt, Borderless Africa, you can see it finally, you can understand what it means, right? So, um, budgetary, our resources, like, you're, you're talking about resources, like for many countries, they use the budget, the financial budget, or budget for, for, for education, right? That budget has to go well, you know, in order to, to, to give it to the right uh, people, to, to people who can impact knowledge in, in, the, in our kids. We have for Sierra here, um, we have one of our, our, our so called minister of the um, lower education, lower basic certificate education, right? So he educated from, from America, he did well. When he came here, he digitalized everything about education. He was given the resources and he fully utilized the resources, right? He, he, he created impact in education, educational sector. Then what is he doing right now? He's, he's, he's included a robotic, you know, this is 21st century. When, right now, when you have to, when you want to master the world, you have to master science. Are you understanding? This 21st century, when you want to master the world, when you want to master the world, you have to master science. This is a very, very important factor, very important um, aspect of our education right now. We have to impact, we have to impact technology, more of technology. Right now, if I'm asked, we have to impact 40% of technology in our, in our children. Because right now, you cannot do anything without technology. You cannot grow without the technology. You have to match the technology. You have to master science and technology before we can master the world. That's everything, because we have the resources. We have the oil, we have the gold, we have we have the, the all the minerals it takes, but we don't have the technology. Are you understanding? We don't have the technology. Do, right? So, yeah. So this is time we have to use this our resources to impact knowledge on our people. Are you understanding? We have we have um we have professors, we have doctors, we have uh PhDs in our universities with so many libraries, books, but this makes no sense. You see, engineer, engineer having his uh, engineering uh, degree and doctorate. The, 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 the degree, the paper is at home. He's sitting at home doing nothing. So what have you learned? So this is the time you have to utilize our resources to create impact in knowledge. For example, what, what Libya did. Libya, they were having oil. But what America was saying, or the other countries who uh, exploit them, you know, they come and buy the, 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 the semi-finished um fuel are you understanding but what did what libya did what, what did he say okay now russia what, what what i want you to do here is now um we don't have the capability we don't have the knowledge um we don't have that education right for to 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 build a factory here in in in, in libya for, for us to transform our oil into finished product so okay now they, they go into agreed agreement he paid he paid them off they come and build the the the, the, the plant out there to manufacture this oil. Are you understanding? So this is this is what we, we are mm -hmm. saying. We can't if we can we cannot invest, take our resources, invest our invest our schools in order to teach them educationally, 
teach them um, locally. You know, um, we have that narrative that when you, when you want to do uh, sophisticated, you have to study to overseas. Why can't we pay people from overseas? We have the diaspora, why they come? Why can't they come here to teach us? You have to invest, you have to take the resources and, and bring people who, who very knowledge, who have knowledge of, of what we want, we want to teach them, so for them to come and teach me. This involves the resources. These are the resources you're talking about. We have to take our own resources to invest in education because every education means everything for our for our continent. Like for the Ghana, like for the for the for the Ghana right now, look how Ghana is doing. One of the diaspora came back, you know, resigned from as an as an artificial intelligence, came in Ghana, built a whole lot of university, then impacting knowledge, what he have learned in, in overseas to the Ghanaian children. He did it himself, but the, 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 the government are capable, are more than capable to take the resources of Africa, you know, go out there, look for the people who are capable to, to, to bring them here to Africa to teach our kids uh, what you're supposed to teach them. Teach them science, teach them uh, technology, teach them agriculture. Wow, the, the sophisticated uh, tools that, that can be used to, 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 discover, to commercialize agriculture. This is a basic fundamental skills that we, uh, that we need right now to impact in our, in our school, ongoing school children. We don't have to sit again, learn physical health education, learn uh, social studies, learn uh, this uh, religious moral education. Then if you want to learn religious moral education, then you can learn it at home. The schools is purely now to, to, to impact, to create impact on developmental impact to our children, for them to see, yes, for them to, yes, they can able, capable, more than capable of taking their country and the continent in their destiny in their, in their shoulder in order to march in other countries out there in the world. Because right now, each and every one in the world is fighting for their interests. So we have to work on our interests. We cannot be able to work on our interests unless we are able to build on ourselves. So we have to take our resources in order to invest in education more than invest but monitoring you know uh the, the circle the circle of uh, of this financial that we're giving because this is uh, most of the crisis in africa happen. when you take uh, a particular hit of our money you give a particular um educator or or minister to invest in a particular education there will be no monitoring so these people will just hinder everything they will you know like you see a minister can travel to the overseas when you are lavishing money, this all this has to be stopped. Give the people the right, the right education, invest in the children, invest in education, also to match the global issues right now, the global agenda. If not that, we can be robbed till the, till the end of this world. So this is time, as I was saying, the 21st century is, is, is one of the African century. So we have to right now, there's a lot of issues happening in the world. We have to tackle our own issue here. The, the world issue is not our issue because the world is not country to us. We feed in the world, but the world does not recognize that. So we have to step on, step on our on our own feet to protect our country, to have the right knowledge, to impact in the right in the children, for them to 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 you know to to believe in themselves, you know, to match our 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 you know our our standard to, to the to the global standard. Thank you. That's very, very well said, um, Mohammed. So this brings us um, to the end as we finish. Our last question is, maybe let's address the bias and the gaps um, in traditional and historical narratives. Because we find that um, most of the history that has been taught to us is half, half told. So how, how can we reduce the bias or how can we address the bias and the gaps in our historical narrative. How can we address the bias? The bias in, in our historical narrative. The bias. The bias. Mm -hmm. Just that simple. Like, there are a lot of bias. As I was saying, our history was mm -hmm. stolen. Like, I can take you way back. There is a particular um, ethnic, ethnic groups in, in Mali. They are ethnic, they, they are ethnicity, mm -hmm. I saw that today and then I follow up, yes. They are, they are astronomers, they are purely to study, to study the stars. The whole of a tribe, let me tell you, the whole of a tribe by then in Mali, just to study the, the stars. They have so many villages, in every each village have 500 uh, members living out there. Are you understanding? There is a lot of books that have been stolen from Mali, a lot of books that, that when the colonizers, it's a biasness. Biasness. Then, secondly, we have we have seen many history in, in Africa here. When we have an inventor, 
who can capable of building sophisticated something. As soon as the, 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 the world see the particular individual, oh, America will pay him a visa and everything, then he goes to overseas. It meaning we are not capable of having this type of people here. So they are recruiting our intelligence to then leave us, you know, with dumb. Because every generation have intelligence people. We are all not intelligent. Everybody have his own, uh, you know, have his own uh, skills in where you are. Some people are agriculturalists, some people like, you know, but there are some people who are very innovative, who are very creative. As soon as they, 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 they identify that person, they, they pay him a, a visa, a ticket, fly to overseas, then that person will never be here anymore. So this is one of the bias that I, that I, that's really hurting me that the last time, even now when I was having some conversation with some people, they tell me, but I cannot blame because when you invent something, you're looking out there for buyer and sell for buyers for someone who can buy and make you reach reach your, your expected level. But our government can offer that to that particular individual. Like for Nigeria, a Nigeria, a guy who I think he invented electricity in electricity, he said, when I watched the video, he said, if I'm given an opportunity, I can electrify a whole of Nigeria with a machine without that cannot use fuel, only water. Only water. He just he said he just needed support. So why can't we invest in this then and allowing biasness for these people to go to the overseas and rather to be there and why this have already make us you know to not achieve our goals? It's one of the biasness. Like I was saying about Mali, Mali, Mali was Mali University, Mali University was a uh, superior university in all of the universities in the world. It was it, it was in Arabic, but is superior to that of Saudi Arabia. When you check history, the more they have 7,000 scripts out there in the Mali that was written, it was written purely by the black people. And some we are stolen because it said the truth. These are some of the biasness. Right? And for 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 our for the problem, we just have to keep a record of everything. We just have to, like I was saying, empower our people. Whenever we we have, whenever we we, we highlighted as somebody who capable of, of building this, the government have to take full action, support that particular individual, empower them, give them what they want. Now you have already built a phone. Some people are built for here in Africa. Some people are building a phone seamless. The phone can make a call without any sim. Why can't us empower these people? Okay, now you have already built this this phone with, with seamless. Now what can you do if we can support you? Can you able to grow to build thousands of these? Can you able to build a whole of a company? Oh no, can you able to, to you know, like, you know, to um, to educate other people how to do this? Okay, now, if you have to build a company or a factory or of this, can, what, what can you do? These are some of the questions that, then, you know, letting these people go away. A lot of biasness. This government are just, they are like, you know, to, to impact in themselves. I'm not against them. I'm not against them, but, you know, we have to talk, think, uh, discuss about tough issues. We do, you cannot talk about country without talking about the government because they are they are they are, they are, they are you know they are on the top of the everything. When it works is the government. When it's not work is the government. So we have to talk about the government, measure the government in, in different issues, in different uh, aspects we are discussing because they, they they are out there. They are with the they hold the, they hold the resources, they hold the power, they hold the every every sector. They are they are they are, they are the engineers. So they have to engineer again. For, for our 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 young generation to be had, they have to have our youth who are capable, are more than capable, who are inventors, who um who, who like um know how to run things um to for them to be empowered, for them to achieve their goals, not letting our people here to run to the overseas, for them to because a Nigerian, a Nigerian out here in the overseas who invented. A, and you know, invented something like a glasses. When you're doing operation, by the process of doing operation, you can identify a cancer. You can see a cancer out there. The first in history, a South African out there who can cure a dumb, somebody who is dumb. He is in South Africa. He can cure a dumb, first in history. So we are more than capable. There's not just this idea, you know, biasness idea saying, we are not capable. We are. We cannot inspire. We have to inspire and motivate our people. We have to invest in our people for us to achieve this. There should be no biasness. We have to focus on our people. Don't focus on us. Focus on your people. Build. Let's build Africa the way the Africa we want. So, thank you.
Okay, that is very, very inspiring. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for um, sparing some time to do this conversation. I'm so happy we got to talk and we got to learn so much. And that's it for today. And I'll see you on our next one. Thank you. Okay. Boyango asene se magire mtu se ha sana ne na finira cheche mekwe. Boyango asene se magire mtu se ha sana ne na finira cheche mekwe. Hello and welcome to the Culture Press, the only place where you can get fun and informative information about the African culture with me, your host, Kamo Vareha. Join me every Sunday at 2 p.m. only at Nisi TV to get all the tea, everything about our culture, our history, our languages, our food, and, and so much more. I cannot wait. Yeah.